you all doing on this fantastic, God-tastic morning? That's wonderful. I hear you saying so many wonderful things. You look beautiful. I imagine if I was close enough to you, I'd be able to tell that you smell good. <laughs> You're in the right place with the right people, prepared to learn the right thing so that you can go out and live the empowered life that you were created to live. You won't lose. You can't be defeated. You won't settle for less. They just don't know what they're up against. When you show up, God's got to show out. Yeah, I know we've got some challenges, but the challenge just has no idea how you pray. I know the doctor says they think they see something, but what they see, God has an answer to. Yeah, I know your heart is heavy, but God is able, God is stable, and God is reliable, and God, everything that promise, that God promised, God is able to deliver. I just am excited about what God is doing right here and right now. Let's hear it for the Temple Ensemble. Our temple musicians, Mr. Martin Woods and Mr. Monte Filon. Monte is leaving for uh, Norway. Uh, relax. Relax. Exhale. Breathe. He's leaving on Tuesday. He'll be back in a few days. You all get possessive in a hurry. Where he going? Why he got to go? He got to go because he got work to do. Amen. Amen. So we're, we're, we're uh, in our dream series. We are at steps. Uh, what steps are we at? Nine. It's on your bulletin, right? It's a trick question. We're at steps nine and ten. So we have, for the past few weeks, been working through this recipe for exactly how it is we can bring into manifestation the dreams that are resident within our soul. Uh, as I was in my car earlier this week, I heard on one of the, the news telecasts, they were talking about migrants uh, attempting to navigate the, the borders into uh, Croatia, but they had to, grow, to go across Croatian, uh, a Croatian land minefield. And now as I'm thinking, and I'm not attempting to minimize uh, the gravity of what it is they're deciding to do as they're making this decision, but I can't help but think that for many of those quote unquote migrants, their dream is to be a part of a society or in a place where they have an opportunity to experience the life that just deep within their souls, they know they were destined to live and so they're willing to traverse a landmine to make their dream come true. Dreams are a powerful thing. Once a dream gets a hold of you, you just can't let it go because it won't let you go. We said earlier on that when a dream comes, it comes as a desire that's tapping at the door of your soul saying, open up and let me in. We said that in order for our dream, this work order that God has given us, we accept the desire, but we must also make decisions that are consistent with the fulfillment of that desire. Did we say that? We said that one of the steps, step number three, is to ask, but it's not this mealy mouth meek, I don't barely deserve, I'm a worm in the dust that doesn't deserve kind of asking. It's not the kind of begging, beseeching that they taught you to do someplace else. It's the kind of asking that says, I know who I am and I know what I deserve. Give me what's mine or open the door and I'll get it myself. It's this kind of asking. We said that when we ask, we also take the step of love. And we said that love works as a magnet to draw to us our dreams desire. We said we must also ex exercise this gift and this power and this ability of faith that we have. And we said that faith begins to form the substance so that the fulfillment of that substance might come to us as the manifestation of our dreams. We said that we have to work because we recognize that faith without works is dead. We said that at some point you got to get busy. It's not enough to just 
dream and never put your hand in the soil. We said that after we get done working, we must labor with thoughts that support the fulfillment of the dream. We all recognize that it is the creative thought seed that must be planted. And once that creative thought seed is planted, we set up the opportunity for us to experience seed time and harvest. We said that we must intelligently and intentionally use the power of our spoken words. We talked about making sure that the way we speak about our dream is in alignment with the fulfillment of that dream. And today we take the steps of listening and acceptance. There was a story about two psychiatrists who met at a 20-year college reunion. One was vibrant while the other looked a little weather-worn. The one said to the other, what's your secret? And he said, well, why do you look the way you look? He said, well, I've been listening to other people's problems every day, all day long, for years on end, and it's made me look like this. And the one who didn't apparently look like he had been through too much said, well, who listens? <laughs> That's sort of what it's like when it comes to the opportunity that we have to listen to God. We hear so often that we have to listen to God, but like this psychiatrist who looks good because he's seen all of these patients, or she's seen all of these patients, but she wasn't really listening. She said she was praying, or he said he was praying, but all of the prayer involved them talking. And when it came time for God to talk, it just seemed like nobody was listening. Good listening is like tuning in to a radio station. Have you ever tried to listen to two stations at one time? When you try to listen to two radio stations at one time, you get a little bit of both and a lot of nothing. Listening requires a choice of where you will place your attention to tune in to what God is telling you, you must first choose to put away all that would divide your attention. And so when we look at the step of listening, I'm reminded of Joseph, who in the scripture is known prominently as a dreamer. And so I'll just go to Genesis 37 and I'll read to you from 5, and it says, once Joseph had a dream, and I'll stop right there. Because when it starts with once Joseph had a dream, if you don't go any further, you might easily imply that since he had the dream, everything after that was smooth sailing. But I do have a warning to those of you who are courageous enough to take up the dream that's in your soul. It's not all going to be smooth sailing. For those of us who are courageous enough and strong enough and daring enough and brave enough to hold, take hold of the dream that's in your soul, there are going to be some times when things are great and there are going to be some times when things are not so good. When you are a dreamer, there are times when people will celebrate what it is you're trying to do, and there are other times when they will castigate you for the very thing that they were once celebrating. When you are a dreamer, sometimes the road just gets a little worn. Joseph, as a dreamer, learned the hard way that just because you have a dream, it doesn't mean things are going to be easy. They say the road to... Um, Some place <laughs> is paved with good intentions. All dreamers have the good intentions. Back to the Genesis story, it says, once Joseph had a dream, and then it says, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, listen to this dream that I dreamed. 
There we were binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly, watch this, my sheaf rose and stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, you must be out of your mind if you, this is, this is, this, excuse me, this is the DBW interpretation. <laughs> this is not the literal, this is not the, the, the new revised standard version. This is, I'm Wellsizing it right now. His brother said to him, you gotta be out of your mind if we, you think we're going to serve you. But the difference between the one who was served and the one who was being served in the dream is based purely upon who got the dream. You understand what I'm saying? It, it, doesn't make, it doesn't mean that Joseph was better. It means that he received his assignment. You still with me? He was able to listen to what God said to him. In Psalms, it says this one line, it says, be still and know that I am God. From our bulletin, it says that we listen, let's take it together, listen to make an effort to hear something. It means to concentrate, to give attention or tune in. So when we listen, we make an effort to hear something. It means that we concentrate or we give our attention to something or we tune in. But please understand that when we are talking about hearing, we're talking about a physiological initial step. When we're talking about hearing, understand that hearing occurs whenever you are in the vicinity and a certain vibration hits your eardrum a certain way. When we're talking about listening, we're not talking about the same thing as hearing. Hearing is physiological, listening is spiritual. Are you with me? When we're talking about listening, we said that it means that we concentrate, right? And when we listen, we do so with a level of concentration. Write this in your notes. When you listen, do so with a level of concentration that engages the thought centers that you have been supporting at the thought stage of the process. Let me say that again. When you listen, you listen with a way that enables you to concentrate and encourage the thought centers that have gathered as you at the, stop, the thought step were thinking good thoughts that were consistent with the dream and the fulfillment thereof. What am I saying? What am I saying? I'm glad you asked. I'm saying that at an earlier stage, you were thinking thoughts that were consistent with the fulfillment of your dream. And now I'm saying when you go into your prayer, you concentrate and you listen to what God says so that God can water the thought seeds that you have been planting. This is why I've been telling you that you can't afford to think any old thing. Because your thoughts gather together. They gather as an aggregation. They gather as a colony. They gather as a group. And so every thought that is consistent with the fulfillment of your dream gathers together. And when you listen in a way that enables you to concentrate, those thoughts get excited. Those thoughts say, listen, he is serious. Oh, watch out now. She is serious about the fulfillment of her dream. When your dream is to be healthy and you listen and God says, I am your health, you can't be sick. And you've already been holding thoughts that says, God is my health, I can't be sick. And so when you concentrate on what God is saying, it energizes and excites the thoughts you've been holding. And those thoughts start moving and touching cells, glands, tissues, fibers, and beings. And then you go back and the doctor says, we can't explain it, but we can when you concentrate when you concentrate through the way you listen this is why everybody can't talk to you this is why some people are not supposed to have access to your earlobes some people can only talk about the stuff that supports how they see you or where they see themselves. You can't, for a dreamer, for a dreamer, for a dreamer, the dreamer cannot afford to talk to people who are not dreaming. If you are a dreamer, you want to surround yourself with other folk who dream. If you, this is why, listen, 
artists travel with other artists. Because when the song or the melody pops up in your head and you start talking about the song or the melody, if you talk to somebody who can't hear the song or melody and you say, I just got a song or a melody, they might say something like, we don't know what you're talking about. I was talking, I was talking to someone the other day. I was talking to someone the other day. I was talking to someone the other day. I'm going to tell on myself now. I was talking to someone the other day. And they said, I got this song in my head. And I said, it's so bad. I said, let me, let me say to the saints, the saints got more grace. Let me say it to the saints. Saints, I told the person, I said, I said, but, you, but you're not an artist. This is, this is the preacher now. This is the preacher. This is the pastor. This, this is the new thought truth student. They said, I got this song in my soul, and I've been hearing it in my head. And then they started talking about people that they saw playing the tune. And I said, but that don't make sense. You, you, that's not in you. Don't let nobody else tell you about what's in you. Don't, don't, don't let anybody, even folk who are supposed to know, miss it every now and again. A broke clock is right twice a day. So you've got to know how to listen innately, listen internally, so that folk who can't see what you can't see or folk who can't see what you can see don't discourage you and get you off the base of what you have been concentrating on. Are you with me? You want to make sure that you travel with people who when you say, baby, this is an idea I had, they can say, baby, you got everything you need to make that happen. You want to be around people who say, I got this inclination to start this business. They say to you, listen, you're going to have to learn some stuff, but you want to go talk to these people, and you want to sit down with those people. Get yourself together for what's being planted in your soul. You don't want to listen to people who say, just because you haven't done it, it means you cannot do it. You got to be careful who you take your advice from. If you listen and you have the proper level of concentration, that concentration will engage and energize the thought centers, and those thought centers begin to serve as nucleuses of spiritual faith and spiritual confidence. Are you still with me? Make sure that you always hold thoughts that are consistent with your dreams so that when you listen and you concentrate, the listening feeds the thought seeds that you've been having. It's like planting a seed, and the listening is the watering of the seed. If you plant the seed in the right place, and the conditions are conducive to the fulfillment of the seed, and you apply the water properly, it's only a matter of time before the manifestation occurs. See. Rarely do people who plant seeds in their garden pray about it. Why don't they pray about it? Because they already understand the law of how it works. Am I right about it? If you already understand the law of how it works, you don't have to pray about something that the law is already taken care of. So if you understand how to listen, and you have already followed the previous steps, you don't have to keep begging God to help you. You have to listen. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. How do we listen? How do we listen from your bulletin? How do we listen? <laughs> so I believe you said that we listen through prayer, communion with God, meditation, conscious thought on the aspects of God, and the silence when we are in a receptive state of mind, we enter into and listen with the still small voice. Is that what you said? Yes. So let me just quickly share with you what you already know. Say, say to your neighbor, there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> but say to them, thanks for the reminder. 
So we say prayer is communion between God and man. Is that right? We say that this communion takes place in the innermost part of our being. Is that right? We say that prayer is the only way to cleanse and purify and perfect the consciousness and heal the body. But why do you need to pray if the process has already worked? If prayer is a way by which to cleanse and perfect consciousness, and if throughout the course of the steps of fulfilling your dream, you have found yourself off, you have found yourself askew, you have made a couple of mistakes or misjudgments, what prayer can do is cleanse and purify that erroneous consciousness and then turn that thing around and put you back in alignment with the steps to the fulfillment of your dream. So you want to pray not so that you can convince God of something, you pray so that you can cleanse and purify any state or point of consciousness that would prevent the fulfillment of your dream. You want to get that stuff out so that your good can get in. You pray because it's one of the powers and the abilities that you have to align yourself with God. You pray so that you can cleanse and purify and build the consciousness that will facilitate the fulfillment of your dreams. You pray not to convince God, but to convince yourself God already knows that you deserve to be blessed. God already knows that you deserve the right wife. God already knows that you deserve a prosperous business. God already knows that you deserve straight A's if you put in the work. God already knows that everything you have the consciousness for, you ought to get. But God also knows Knows that there is some space in our consciousness that's got to be clean. If you've been on the earth plane for five minutes, you've heard something about something about something about something about something. Some of it good, some of it not good. Some of it you've accepted. You don't know why you accepted it. You don't know why. You accepted it because they said it. They looked like they knew what they were talking about. <laughs> they had a briefcase. <laughs> they were eloquent when they spoke. Next thing you know, your mortgage is underwater. <laughs> I want to, no, 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 I want to keep it real, real with you. Can I, can I keep it all the way real? Yeah. How, how do we listen? We listen through prayer. We listen through prayer, but prayer is not supplication. Prayer is not supplication. You can't beg God enough to get God to change the will that God already established for you. You, listen, listen, can I, can I talk to you real, real? Listen, if you really want to please God, stop begging and de deal with the guilt that is prompting you to beg God. If you really want to please God, let go of the stuff that you know you ought to let go and get busy doing the stuff that you know you ought to be doing. No judgment, no judgment, no judgment. I just want to help you this morning. Because begging God does not move the ball forward. Rather, it keeps you right in the cycle that produced the experience to begin with. So prayer, when we're talking about it, we're not talking about supplication. We're not talking about begging. We're talking about, rather, an affirmation of the truth that externally and eternally always exists. When we're talking about a prayer, we're talking about making sure that we can be still and think about, ooh, this is good right here. Put this in your notes. When we're talking about prayer, we're talking about stealing ourselves so that we can recognize the inexhaustible substance of God. This is what you shape and bring it to manifestation. This is what your thinking and your thought and your faith and your love is working on. It's working on the invisible substance that is also a synonym for God. So if God is the substance that you shape, and you're begging God for something other than more substance. See, you don't need more substance. You need to use your mind in a way that's intelligent. Put that in your notes. 
You don't need more good. You need to access the good that's already available to you. So when you pray, you are not praying for God to change something that's outside of you. You pray so you can get your mind aligned with the mind of God. And so the scripture says, my thoughts are not like your thoughts and my ways are not like your ways. Why? Because we're out of alignment. Prayer helps us get back into alignment, but also meditation is beneficial. Meditation is beneficial. Meditation is the continuous, say continuous. 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 Now, so, now see, some of you are tired of me saying continuous. Why he keeps saying continuous? Why you keep saying continuous? We heard you. Why you keep saying continuous? Because meditation is the continuous. Medi meditation is not the do it this moment and not do it that moment. It is a continuous contemplative thought. It is a continuous thought that allows you to analyze. It is a continuous thought that allows you to review and preview. It is the continuous thought that allows you to be absorbed in the realization of truth. So if, if, when you are sitting in the doctor's office and the doctor doing that job Praise God for all doctors and nurses everywhere doing their job. When they tell you what it is, what you have to be doing is having your continuous contemplative thought on truth. Now, if you think that you can do it one moment and not do it the next, well, the gap where you're not doing it might be the moment where somebody else is pouring in what you ought to be pouring in. Are you still with me? So meditation is the continuous, contemplative, reflective, absorbed, introspective thought to dwell. Just stop right there. To dwell, right? Any, anybody here have a dwelling? What do you do in your dwelling? You live in your dwelling, is that right? So when we're talking about me this meditation, this mind of meditation, we're talking about a continuous contemplative thought that you live in. And when you live in it, it also means that you live in the desire that you got in the beginning. Yes. So you got to connect the dots. If at the listening stage, you're having continuous contemplative thought, what are you thinking about? The desire that you got back at step one. What are you meditating about? The fulfillment of the idea that God gave you back at step one. What are you meditating about? What are you dwelling in? What are you living in? You're living in the fulfillment of the dream God gave you back at step one. Here is where some of us miss it. When we get to the meditative place, we're, we're meditating about something other than the desire back at step one. Now we're, at first, <laughs> at first we were meditating about a successful business. No, at first the desire was about a successful business. Now we're meditating about how to fix somebody else's problem. At the desire stage, at the desire stage, we were, we were receiving how we could fix our relationship. At the meditation stage, we're thinking about what's wrong. We've got continuous contemplative thought about what the heck is wrong with him. The, the things don't match up. The steps are not aligned. Are you with me? Let me keep going. 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 And so then we get into the silence. And we know that the silence is a state of consciousness 
that's entered into for the purpose of putting us in touch with the mind of God so that the soul may be open. So the psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. When we go into the secret place, when we go into the secret place, we go into the secret place so that we can close the door. See, the good thing about closing the door is that means the good stuff can't get out and the silliness can't get in. But if you bring the silliness in with you, then the silliness will be in the silence. Ooh, somebody should tweet that. Who's, who? somebody tweet that for me because if you bring the silliness into the silence, then what you will be meditating and praying on? Oh, you got it. You got it. I love good students. So when we go into the silence, we close the door so that the meeting place can get the benefits or so that we can get from the meeting place the benefits for which we met. When you go to a meeting, you go to a meeting with an agenda. When you go to a meeting, you don't go to a meeting willy-nilly. Even if it's just a lunch meeting, even if you and I are just going to have lunch, we're going to, the agenda is to enjoy one another's company. If you go into the meeting, if you go into the silence, you go with an agenda. So when you go into the silence with God, make sure that you bring the right agenda. Are you still with me? Let's go, let's go to step 10. Let's go to step 10. Let's go to step 10. So step 10 says that we accept. Step 10 says that we accept. And I can hear the psalmist saying, my soul, mm, waits thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Your bulletin says, let's take it together, your subconscious mind accepts what is impressed upon it or what you consciously believe. The subconscious mind accepts impressions as feelings. So your subconscious mind accepts what is impressed on it or what you consciously believe. Good Lord. The subconscious mind accepts impressions as feelings, but the work of the subconscious mind or the work of the subjective mind is to produce whatever is impressed upon it. At one stage, 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 God didn't necessarily trust the man to produce what God wanted done. And so God would just touch the feeling nature mm, in a way that would produce what God wanted to see reproduced. We see it, we see it, we see it in the Jesus story. They say God wanted a perfect man, one that was just like God. And so God didn't bother going through the man to produce or reproduce that which was like God. And see, y'all acting like I lost you on this. You still with me on this thing? All right. Do this. Let's put a let's put a bullet like let, we'll, we'll put a point right there. We'll come. Uh, I get. I, let's teach that some other time. It's just y'all y'all. I think y'all just left me right there. I think you left me. And even if you didn't, in my soul, I think you left me. So we're gonna go on. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So the work of the subconscious mind, the work of the subjective nature, is to reproduce whatever is given to it from the conscious phase of mind. So your subconscious mind reproduces whatever your thinking nature gives it. What I was saying before is that if God feeds your subconscious mind, if through your prayer, your meditation, and your sitting in the silence, God feeds your subconscious mind, then that idea or that dream will reproduce. That's what I was getting at. But you start getting funny on me. So the work of the subconscious mind is to intensify the God feeling, to intensify 
the desire, the work of the subconscious mind is to intensify the desire. So the work of accepting is to intensify the desire that you got at step one. The work of the subconscious nature is to intensify and bring into manifestation the dream that you got at the desire stage. How does it work? You must let the impression of God on your mind feed your subconscious nature, feed your feeling nature, so that it can make manifest the thing that you desire. Here is where we get lost. Here is where we get lost. Here is where we miss it. Many of us, many of us, many of us, not you, maybe a person in your room, many of us are still working out of the feeling nature that which has long since passed. For many of us, our feeling nature is preoccupied with that which was, so much so that we're having a difficult time bringing into manifestation and accepting that which now is. Let me say it this way. Somebody broke your heart. You still mad about that. Somebody made you mad. You still hurt about that. Somebody said something about you. You still rehearsing that. Somebody told you what you couldn't do or couldn't be. You still accept that. We sometimes still live out of our subconscious nature that which is in our past, but you've got to remember and you've got to be careful because the subconscious nature is the storehouse of the memory. So if you don't give the subconscious nature something new to manifest, it will manifest from your memory. And it doesn't matter if it's a good memory or a bad memory, it will bring back what your thoughts are suggesting. This is why you can't think everything you want to think. Just because you're free doesn't mean you should think anything. Just because they say it on the news doesn't mean you should be saying it. Just because somebody's trying to keep up with the Kardashians doesn't mean you should be chasing after them. <laughs> the subconscious nature, ooh, works and memory, 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 this is from your revealing word, read it. Memory is crystallized into function and form. Memory is crystallized into function and form. What does that mean? The stuff from your memory is becoming manifest. You don't like what's showing up. You've got to give some new data. You've got to give some new thoughts. You've got to give some new fire. You've got to give some new dream to your subconscious mind. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's take that last point. There are two ingredients in accepting. Responsibility and maintenance. There are two ingredients in accepting. Responsibility and maintenance. Remember that responsibility is the state or fact of having the capacity or duty to deal with whatever you are faced with. Here is what I appreciate about Joseph. What Joseph may not have realized when he got the dream was that he had the duty and the capacity to bring forth and manifest that which we, he was given at the very outset. But here is what I want to tell you. Sometimes your dream is going to take you to the pit. Sometimes your dream is going to have people that you love turning against you. Sometimes your dream is going to have people who want to get with you lying on you. Sometimes your dream is going to put you in some uncomfortable places. Sometimes your dream is going to put you in prison. But when you come out, you'll be able to say that they meant it for evil, but God meant it for my good. So you want to be able to accept the responsibility for the divine capacity that you have. Then you want to be able to maintain. What does this maintenance mean? Maintenance means that from step one, 
up through step 12, there is some processing that you must do to rearrange your mind, to reset your body, to recalibrate your subconscious nature so that the fulfillment and manifestation of your dream won't be left in your memory. It won't left be left in your thought, but it will be made manifest. God gave it to you for a reason. And you're going to have to navigate some landmines. But no, beyond the shadow of a doubt, you are infinitely equipped to bring forth and manifest the dream that God gave you. God bless you.